you know what? I'll just say this. Is the grocery store gonna get mad at me if I complain about the carts not being returned? Wait, what? <laughs> like, if I come on the podcast and complain about something or talk about something, yeah. am I supposed to talk about no people, places, or things while I'm here? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hello, everyone. How are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new here, my name's Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland. And here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting and spinning. This is my first video podcast in several weeks. I took a quick vacation to the state of Maine. We could get like a lifetime supply of blueberries in this field. Yeah, I think so. This field is in our backyard. I would never buy a blueberry ever again. I know. Brian and I visit a cabin every summer and I got to lounge on a floating dock in the middle of a gorgeous pond day after day after day after day. And it was everything I ever needed. And I feel like I have a lot to talk about and also nothing at all. So we're just gonna dive right into it. It is currently a real feel of 105 degrees here in Baltimore. My home is about a century old, almost. And we don't have central AC. Um, we run a window unit and a couple box fans throughout the house and I had to shut all of that down so that I could record this right now for you all. So this is going to be a very brief episode today. I hope you won't mind, but I thought I would update you on my current knitting projects as this video channel, video channel, this channel has become more of a sort of diary of source of what I've been making. And of course, I like to attend fiber festivals uh, twice a year. And a lot of the times what I'm making revolves around uh, what I'll be wearing. <laughs> so I, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not as, I would say, devoted to the craft as I had been in years past. I think that I found a lot of comfort at the end of the day pouring a drink and sitting down to knit. And in the last couple years, I quit drinking and I don't consume alcohol. So I almost have less of an impulse now than I did previously to sit and knit because I don't have uh, a whole lot to sit with except for, you know, all the things that come up when you don't have the comfort of being inebriated. So <laughs> I don't sit down and knit as much as I used to, which I noticed on vacation because of course I'm planning to knit on vacation. And because I was knitting so much in the car and um, I was knitting as much as I could in the evening hours while there was still daylight. Our cabin that we stay in is sort of off grid. It doesn't have much um, lighting. There's like an LED solar powered situation, but it's not, it's not the most well lit cabin. So I knit as much as I could while I was away and I did accomplish a full sleeve up to what will be the ribbing of Stephen West's bubble cardigan. Um, and it, it taught me that I really haven't been knitting much lately. I think more so than that, the time I have spent knitting hasn't really paid off in material garments. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I did cast on the second sleeve. I started out following the instructions as written for the decreases. And I was a little worried that my sleeve would end up too wide and too long. So I immediately flipped from decreasing every like fourth round to every other round for a while. And then right around, I wish I had marked it. I think it was here. I switched to decreasing uh, for uh, twice within each color row. And I, I sort of wish that I had increased at that rate throughout the entire sleeve because it does have a little bit of a, in my opinion, I feel like it has a little bit of a hump here, but I'm just gonna knit the second sleeve exactly as the first sleeve because it is what it is and I can probably block it out a little bit at the corner here and just stretch it so that it looks um, a little bit more like a gradient sort of situation, if, if that means anything, I don't know. But here is my current bubble cardigan. As you might already know, 
The ribbing will be done in a solid black, which I think is going to really ground all of this bright gradient color situation. I did weave in all of the ends to the armholes and I've woven in almost all of the ends to the sleeve as I worked the sleeve. So even though I have a fair amount of ends to weave in still along the front side after the sleeves, um, it really didn't take all that much time. And I'll probably first knit the second sleeve, then, or at the same time, do the ribbing of the first cuff, the ribbing of the bottom hem, and then last, I will sew in these ends and then pick up and knit the collar. I do think that finishing this before Rhinebeck so that I can wear it to the festival will be quite a task. If I could just maybe, this is me setting unrealistic goals for myself right now, but if I could knit the second sleeve through potentially the first week of August, that would give me time to, I'm not even going to do this to myself. I'm just going to try to sit down and knit today. I'm going to try to sit down and knit tomorrow and we'll see what progress I make before the week ahead. And then I think I should um, try to structure my time Monday through Friday, like I did with my spinning goals sort of era prior to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I wanted to spin a full skein of yarn every week and I was successful in that most weeks I think it was like five out of six or seven weeks I had done that and I had a strategy and my strategy was to um, accomplish one goal three days a week so that I was ready by Friday at the latest to ply and that allowed me to succeed in my goal so I need to figure out what my strategy is for knitting this before October 21st, which is when I intend to wear this garment. I also would very much like to make a matching t-shirt to wear beneath it. I hope to knit a t-shirt that has about five or six of the colors that are worked into this. Um, and I'll talk about that later once it's started, if it is started. But a fingering weight, oversized garment is, I mean, obviously I'm not casting on to knit it right now and I, I have a good amount of it done, but it's still daunting nonetheless. There's just so many stitches in every single row or round and it's a lot. And I really hope to wrap this up by then so that it's over. I've been working on this for well over a year now and uh, I'm just ready to wear it. <laughs> I'm ready to have this in my wardrobe and I'm tired of looking at it in my knitting bag um, because there's so many skeins of yarn involved in making this. It's a lot to lug around. I try to pick out the colors I might get to if I take it anywhere, but every time I've taken it anywhere, I pretty much never work on it. I'm not sure why, but it's been a little bit of a slog. I made some good progress working on this sleeve while we were away. I think um, having sort of just got back into the groove of knitting again, at least that's how it feels, um, I, I was able to do enough, you know? Not a ton, but enough. And I have a couple projects here I thought I would just give you a quick review on while I have your attention. This is not it. Um, this is the, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, it's D apostrophe. A-I-S-I. -I. I think it's a pattern by Natasha Hornby. That's not it either. Where did I put this? Oh, it's in the other room. I'll be right back. I have made some progress on this. I did bring it with me when I was away, but I hadn't worked on it. I'm at a point right now where I need to knit um, a welt. And I've already knit a few welts and I know exactly how tedious it is, but this welt has a lot of stitches. It goes all the way across basically the bottom up around and back. So it's sort of a lot of work and I just haven't had the headspace to accomplish that. But essentially for this pattern, it's all crumpled up, I'm sorry. This is the front and this is the front neck and then you separately knit the back and then you join the front and the back with stitches that you cast on that basically go over the shoulder here. 
So I've knit about that much and suddenly I'm concerned that this might be too small, but I think it all should turn out well. I have an immense amount of faith these days in blocking. I'm not sure if that's a wise perspective to maintain, but that's how I've been feeling, especially about the bubble cardigan because there's so much texture. And a lot of the time when you're knitting fabric with texture, you really aren't ever sure of exactly how it will change as you wet it and the stitches become heavier and the fabric really kind of smooths itself out. Um, the bubble cardigan is oversized by nature, so I'm not at all anxious about it not fitting, but all of a sudden I'm a little anxious about this not fitting. I did choose the size smaller than I would have picked based on the measurements because I heard tell, I'm not sure if it was in the comments of a video or on a project page, but I heard someone say, I think it was in the comments, that, that they knit this pattern and they felt like it came out a little bigger than they had hoped. And well, I'll just have to sit down with uh, a, a second gauge measurement and do a little math, but that's that. I Lastly, I wanted to show you, I was going to knit a self-designed drop sleeve t-shirt. It was going to be a v-neck with a collar um, and I started working on the back panel to basically do a little bit of a, I guess I was going to do it in a square rectangle which I don't know would have been smart. I should have probably given some shaping to it but I came to the harsh realization which I wish I had much sooner because I did put a lot of effort into knitting this piece of fabric after having knit the original swatch uh, that I don't have nearly enough yardage to do this. I have exactly two what I think are smaller skeins. I, I don't, if these are 100 grams, I would kind of be surprised. They, This, of course, is worked into this, but this is the uncut cake of yarn. <laughs> um, this doesn't feel like a full 100 grams to me. Like it, I, I should measure it, right? I should just pull out a calculator. But even still, the... It's like a fingering weight yarn, but it feels more like a sport, um, like a very light DK, heavy fingering for sure. So the yardage, I just don't think is there. Even if I have two whole skeins and then I have two 50 gram skeins from Spin Cycle, which I adore, even though it is superwash yarn and I don't love the way that superwash yarn feels in my hands or wears over time. Um, I do love the bounce and the structure of their single spin and the ply together. It's a lot denser than um, other yarns, which is why it's a sport and not a fingering, which is more common, I think, among superwash yarns. But I digress. I, that's the yarn I was using to knit an entire shirt as if that were possible, and I don't think it is. Um, but this is the textured fabric that I will be tearing out, which is sad, but I just need to get back to reality and realize that that's just not gonna happen. I'm washing my hands of this and I thought I'd let you know. I'm also, I went through my wardrobe and I've decided I'm going to rip out this sweater. It's a lovely sweater. It just fits a bit strange. I'm not gonna put it on because it's so hot, but as you can see, the shoulders are a bit broad and I have broad shoulders. If you've listened to me say anything about my shoulders, you know that I love a lot of room in my shoulders, but the shoulders to this sweater just feel not flattering. Um, I think maybe just because of the way I did use a DK weight contrast yarn, so it's a little heavier than the fingering weight main color yarn, which I thought would be fine, but I think it added just enough bulk that it minimized the drape and it didn't quite drape as well. I also feel like the sleeves are a little bit long, uh, but the cuff was not knit long enough to roll the sleeves up and it look pleasant. When you roll it up, you see the reverse stockinette mostly. So I'm just not in love with it. I don't like the way it fits. It's also very cropped where I feel like this is a good style for a larger bodied person who has a shorter waist. They can throw a sweater like this on over any dress, any skirt, and it's really flattering. 
Um, a lot of the times they have a bust that kind of fills in the width of the sweater, which I feel like I just don't have. To me, this sweater looks ill-fitting. I don't feel confident wearing it. And I think that's all that matters is if I don't like wearing it, I don't need to keep it. Um, the yarn is still very lovely. It's a farm yarn. They're both farm yarns from different farms that I've picked up from New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And this is Fox Hill Farm, I think. Um, you can really only find their yarns there. Maybe you can buy them over the phone or they might have a website, although I don't think they do. This is, um, it's another farm yarn um, inside the uh, barn usually is where their booth is. They um, they have just natural color. These are both natural color Cormo yarns. Oh, this is a Merino yarn in the contrast and the main is Cormo. It's not the softest Cormo. It's comparable to the Elsa wool Cormo yarn that I love and adore. And it's usually like 22 or 24 dollars a skein based out of Canada. But this color is a little bit warmer than the Elsa wool. Elsa wool has a gradient uh, of options from light, from white and light gray to more medium and charcoal grays and even a brown. But this is more of like a fawn color. So I'm going to tear this out. I'm going to save it for something else one day. Um, I think I have a full on, no, I have like 75 grams of a skein left over. So I could potentially knit another sweater with this, but I think I might instead work it into a shawl. It's kind of a little crunchy. It's a little pilly. It's not my absolute most favorite yarn ever, but it's quality enough that I want to keep it in my stash, just not in the form of this garment. It would be helpful if I knew exactly what I wanted to turn it into because then I would feel inspired to knit it again. But as it is, I kind of just feel like I want to tear it out and make a project of washing, you know, soaking the yarn, airing it out to dry and re it back into um, a way to store this fiber in a way that it can be knit again. So anyway, that's that. And that's about everything I have to say about knitting. Um, I'm, I'm just really hot right now. It's very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. And I'm, I'm over it. I'm over this heat. I have already decorated my stairwell for the late summer, early fall season. I got out all three storage containers from the basement of my fall decor, and I um, decided I would stick with the bright yellow and orange flowers that I have purchased several years ago now, um, and at least celebrate the end of summer while we still have it. I kept and put back into the basement all of my pumpkins in storage. So I have just one new pumpkin on display in our home. When it's fall season, I really go all out with the decor and then I'll transition it into winter seasonal decor. Um, and I really have found a lot of joy in doing that the last few years, couple years, because as it gets colder here in Maryland, the days get shorter. It can become a little depressing when you like don't get out of work until after the sun has set and there's no time to roller skate in the day and um, et cetera, et cetera. But that's months away still, but I'm already excited to blow through this summer season. I'm not the biggest fan of summer. I am a fall, winter girly and I'm ready for it. I will just mention while I have you that I I have in this bag here the yarn I've set aside for that Taylor Swift chevron tank top that I talked about. This is just one of many white skeins for the main um, edging, but I didn't have the needles that I definitely wanted to knit it with, but I did purchase, this is my vacation haul. Normally I gravitate towards a 32 inch when it comes to fixed cables, 32 inch fixed 
Knitting needles are the most versatile size possible. You can do magic loop, you can do socks two at a time, and you can fit a whole sweater on it. So I got size US two and a half, as well as a size US two. And I think both of those will be a more appropriate needle to knit that backless tank top with than the metal ones that I've had available that I just don't prefer working on. And then I also picked up, um, I actually stashed them both in here, but two, um, two other needles. Uh, this is not probably the most exciting information, but if you care to know, I love a small circumference knitting needle. I bought a size three and a size four. I currently have inside my bubble cardigan, the size four for the sleeve. Um, but I'm going to switch to the three when I do the ribbing. And then I also picked up a um, Knitter's Pride four inch needle in the size US three because I think I needed one. I just realized I bought the interchangeable threes because I've never owned one before. And I was really excited to see a US three interchangeable needle from Knitter's Pride. If you made it this far into this week's episode, let me know in a comment below with the yarn ball emoji because this garment has taken so many that I've had to schlep everywhere I've gone that um, that's that. Did you see the Barbie movie? I really liked it. I mean, it was fun. It was exciting. It was cute. I felt seen. Anyway, um, that's that. That's it for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And if you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on, what are we on? We're on Instagram, threads, Ravelry, those places. You can find me on social media. And I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for all my future videos. And I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and that you all take care.